Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is a video about building the Unibeam for my Iron Man cosplay. So contrary to popular belief, the light that shines out of Iron Man's chest is in fact not his arc reactor showing through. It's another high power repulsor weapon. So my plan is to build a very bright light to go in there to make the brightest Unibeam in the world. So what I've got here to use in my Unibeam are some LEDs. This is the sort of LED you'd be used to seeing, which is the sort of thing you just use in normal electronics projects. This LED is rated at 20 milliwatts, which is 20 thousandths of one watt. Um, however, the LEDs I'm actually going to use are these white LEDs, uh, which you can see are rather larger. They also have a massive metal slab on the back, um, which is a heat sink and big power terminals. These are 10 watt LEDs. Um, so comparing that to 20 milliwatts, if this was 1 watt it would be 50 times brighter but it's 10 watts so that makes it 500 times brighter than this. Um, I've got 6 of them, I've got 2 here um, and another 4 in these packets. They're only £2 each from eBay in the UK um, so that's £12 for all of them and that's 60 watts. Um, each one draws 900 milliamps which is nearly an amp um, which means, um, and they run at 9 to 10 volts, so I've got um, 8 1.2 volt batteries here, because they're rechargeables, and I just metered that, um, gives me about just over, just over 10 volts, which is fine for testing. Um, obviously if I power all 6 of them, it's going to run those flat quite quickly. But anyway, let's um, power one up and see how bright it is. So I just need to put these wires together. Oh, wow, actually thought that was on fire then, but it's not, it's just on. I can't um, look at that and do it because it's so bright. There we go. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad on camera. Obviously it whites out the camera, so the camera also adjusts for brightness. But um, that's really too bright to look at. I'll have to get my sunglasses out. Okay, so I'm in my lounge. Um, it's pretty much completely dark. You can see two blue lights, which are for my ADSL router and the uh, TV box. Um, I've got this LED, which you can just see in front of the lens there, and I'm going to power it up. There we go, so it's pretty much like putting the lights on. And that's only one of them. Right, so what I've now got is a specialist PWM controller. Um, I've, got a, I've actually got a pair of them from an old robotics project. Um, this is a, a Veloman K8004 kit. Um, I think I bought these in Maplins in the UK years ago. They're probably still available, or at least the schematic is. Um, basically, it's meant for controlling motors. Um, it works up to 30 volts and, and I think 6 amps. So each one of these draws 900 milliamps, which is 0.9 amps, so I should be able to run all six of them if I so wished, or at least I could put three on each if I really wanted to. Um, and that's going to allow me to dim it up and down. So um, at the moment I've just got this little preset attached for um, adjusting the output, and it's got basically a duty cycle adjustment and a minimum and maximum voltage. So I've got my batteries wired in. I've also got my sunglasses out because that's the only way I can do this and um, still look at what I'm doing. So let's uh, we should be able to see this dimming up and down. It's quite hard because the camera tries to auto adjust, but uh, you should be able to see that just getting brighter and dimmer as I turn the knob. So I've now wired all six of them in, and I've um, attached them to this old uh, heatsink, which is um, basically an Intel heatsink from a PC from the CPU heatsink and fan. I've taken the fan off. They get warm, but they don't get that hot if they're only powered for a short periods. So um, it's mostly for effect, to be honest. And I've wired them all in parallel, so all the positives are linked together and all the negatives are linked together on these wires to the PWM controller. Um, now I've powered this up and metered the current. So the batteries. Um, uh, basically can't provide enough current to power it currently. They can only provide about 2 amps when I need 5 to power them all at full power. Um, but it's still pretty bright, so let's power that up and see what it looks like. 
All right, so I've got my sunglasses ready so that I can do this. I can't see now. There we go. So all that remains is to provide some way of uh, giving the PWM a reference voltage that ramps up and down so it fades up and down nicely and also to 3D print a diffuser and some sort of mounting to put it into the chest. So here are my 3D printed parts, um, that fits perfectly in the chest plate. This piece is clear PLA which works as quite a good diffuser and this is silver ABS and they fit quite nicely over there. So um, as I mentioned before I'm having some trouble um, basically providing enough current to power these at about 5 amps. Uh, the problem with these batteries is that they can't source 5 amps and maintain 10 volts so obviously the voltage drops off um, and then they're not, uh, there's not enough voltage to drive the current. So if we just draw a quick diagram, um, if we had, um, if we imagine a hose pipe and then the voltage ac measured across it um, is basically water pressure and the current flowing in it, denoted by I but measured in amps, is the actual water flowing through it. So the higher the water pressure, the more you'll push through. Um, so Basically, as the voltage drops off on the batteries of that current, it can no longer push that much current. So that's why we only get about 2 amps. So I've been experimenting with various other things. Um, I've tried these, which are super capacitors, which are 50 farad capacitors. Um, and this is something that's um, become available through modern technology. I've got a capacitor here from probably the 70s or the 80s, which is 50,000 microfarads. So um, that's 50 thousandths of one farad, and look at the size of that. These are 50 farads, so these are a thousand times the capacity. Um, uh, they're only rated at 2.7 volts, so you have to put them all in series to get enough voltage, because we need um, sort of 10 volts. Um, so that means that the capacity divides down. So you actually get 10 farads, but that's still quite a lot. Um, and that works. But the only issue is that um, capacitors discharge very sharply, so if that's time going that way, and that's the charge going that way, um, what we find with a capacitor discharging is it discharges very, very sharply like this. So you get a very bright flash for a very short amount of time, um, and then the LEDs continue to be powered for probably 30 seconds, but very dimly lit. So um, that wasn't a good plan altogether. Um, I've however been experimenting with different batteries, so I've got two 7.2 volt racing packs here um, and I've been experimenting again with my PWM controller, so instead of um, powering this off 10 volts, I've been powering it off 14 volts, the, the voltage still drops down, but obviously we've started higher, so instead of starting at 10 volts and it immediately dropped down to 8.5, it starts at 14 and drops down to sort of 9.5, almost 10. So um, using the, the regulation on this PWM to drive the LEDs, I've in fact found that I can um, push 3 amps into them. So this seems like a good plan. Now ideally, if you know what you're talking about here, um, what I really need is a proper LED driver that's a, cor a constant current source, which will um, you know, make sure the constant current is set to what you want it, so you know, four and a half, five amps, and it will increase the voltage to do so and, re and regulate both of them so that you get constant current driven into the LED cluster. And that's basically how proper LED light bulbs and so on work. Um, so I'm going to cheat a bit and I'm going to use a microcontroller to regulate the input on this, so the reference voltage coming in is going to be controlled um, with the digital to analog converter on a microcontroller. And that's also you're going to use the analog to digital converter on the input of the microcontroller to monitor the output voltage. So I'm going to try and power it off um, bigger batteries. 
and as well as being able to fade up and down the LEDs by um, ramping up and down the reference voltage, we can also monitor the output to check we don't overdrive them. So um, even with three amps, this really is too bright to look at. Obviously it's brighter than the previous tests I showed at two amps. So I think that'll probably do, but we just need to put some extra control around it um, and get these batteries charged up. So I'm gonna come back and do a part two on this where hopefully um, we'll have the whole thing working. So make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos.